Welcome to Neurotic News. Uh, I feel like I should start the podcast by mentioning that we are going to do, I think it's actually our first ever official live podcast. That's right, isn't it, Rathi? Yeah. We've never done an official Neurotic News live. No, just some other trial things. We've, we've done stuff sort of together on awesome. stage. but So that's going to be a good chat. Um, in Brisbane, for starters, we we might do something in Melbourne as well. Obviously, it's all up in the air, but our first one will be in Brisbane together live, Neurotic News podcast on the 16th of March at Good Chat Comedy Club, which is underneath Fritzenberger on Caxton Street. So that will go on sale. And if you want to get tickets to that, um, there will be the appropriate stuff on my social media on it. I'll plug it in on Instagram and Facebook and on my website and all that stuff. So um, keep your eyes out for that. Um, mm. Yeah, we'll probably do some stand. We'll be doing stand up together as well. Pro- probably do some stand up at the show, and we'll we'll be doing shows together that week as well. So it'll be me and Rathi extravaganza. <laughs> mm. I, I just I I hope that the um they keep those hotels safe. You mean from all those from all those people coming in? You don't like the people coming in, do you? No, no, no. <laughs> people if <laughs> not like this. And not like that. Not like that. I just don't I mean I've people who've come back from holidays at the best of times are a pain in the ass. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I know this guy came back from Machu Picchu, couldn't stop fucking talking about how he reconnected rekindled like his soul and shit off you know what i mean these right. ayahuasca stories these are the type of pricks that piss you off coming back during the best of times so you're saying that now they're coming back with their holiday stories with the added bonus of shutting down melbourne's economy yeah like there's an added, like, isn't that- not, not only do you have to come and visit them in quarantine and hear their story about how they took ayahuasca and realized they need to be a better listener then they've also got the added bonus of shutting down the entire country's economy because they brought back a dangerous disease. And of course they're asymptomatic because they eat acai berries. You know, yeah, it's an asymptomatic rich. cunt that's had an acai bowl and and you know, is in a, so he doesn't feel the virus because he's in a state of ketosis and then fucking shuts down the economy. He shuts down the economy because he's literally, while he's telling his story about how a, a healer tried to finger his asshole. <laughs> like during a state of a deep trip D- DMT trip, because he's having a spiritual awakening while yeah. he's telling you that story, a spit, a, 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 some spit like lands on someone and he spreads. So he's literally spreading it while he's spreading his stories of, of um, self-realization overseas. His stories are in a way worse than the spread of the virus because, you know, just, just hearing them can be. That's also frustrating. Yeah, what's worse, shutting down the economy or hearing about a guy's um, how he fell asleep at watching the sunset on Ibiza? What's worse? What's worth? I'd rather be on a ventilator than hear that shit. Like, yeah. you know, when they bring back the slideshow presentation of it as well. <laughs> it's like, here's where I found myself and yeah. spent two years in London as a hedge fund trader. It's like, really? And now yeah. you fucking shut down a state. Give me the, da- you- yeah, give me the dangerous disease instead of this shit. I don't mind some guy spreading it at Aldi because like you've got to go shopping. You know, when I see those guys who've had the big, big weekend, I don't get angry about them because it's right, like we've all had a big weekend. They're living their regular life. Yeah. It's the cunt coming back from, <laughs> from the bull run in Spain or that thing where they chase cheese down a hill. You know that one where they chase cheese down yeah, the hill? Yeah. It's like, oh man, it's so amazing. And it's like, stop. Yeah. Yeah, but also I have the the uh, the new South African strand. Yeah, is- <laughs> yeah. I cop that at a cheese plate eating session in in the north of Italy that I didn't <laughs> that I enjoyed eating a fermented cheese that was they use maggots to make it taste even weirder. Yeah, so yeah, I copped yeah. a new strain there. They're always Did doing they're, they're always doing weird shit to cheese just letting it rot and then they serve it up like this is the rotten cheese it's really special we've covered it in ash our cheese was covered in ash it's like what so you got mold and ash on your fucking cheese how do they how does the cheese industry get away with it i would never admit that i like cheese in public 
It's embarrassing. You know what I mean? These cheese people. Oh, you mean like people that are obsessed with cheese? Yeah, just they're going on about cheese in public. Like, keep it private. Yeah, keep it together. So, have you? you what be are you ashamed? Have you been going to parties and stuff? Is that allowed? Well, I for Australia Day, I went to a pool party, and um, but it was okay because a gay guy did a welcome to country. Right. So he wasn't indigenous. Like, no. He just... <laughs> but I thought so, it cancelled it out. Do you know what I mean? Like oh. it all. Can't... That's why Doesn't you that mentioned the gay thing, right? So you're saying well, he wasn't indigenous, but he was gay. And so, he did a welcome to country. And he did a welcome to country. Does that cancel out? How to gay? Make it okay. How gay? Um, I feel like, you know, there's something kind of amusing to me about a really, really camp person doing a welcome to country. He's very camp. Seriously. Um, yeah. So he was like, I'd like to thank the Negrata people of the Western Plains. Like yeah, yeah, of, yeah. That our ancestors lived this time and it's important they spread their stories past, present and future always was. That's, it's, I think it's, it, I, I think that's a little bit of like forgetting the camp thing. Yeah. I think it's a little bit obnoxious to do a welcome to country when you're not indigenous. Well, you shouldn't be doing a welcome to country at a pool party shortly followed by Amel. And then, you know, <laughs> you just... <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't and be then you, woo, jumping into, <laughs> yeah, like before you, the bomb diving into the yeah, pool. Yeah, like I, I get the welcome to country thing, but if you're just doing it as a weird virtue signal thing before you snort uh, ammo and then you know, so it loosens your asshole, so you can get pounded in the ass later. I just or whatever you know, if pounded in the pussy ass. I'm not making it a gay thing. I'm just saying whatever it is. If people are in the pool, you know, splashing around. It's yeah, wrong. the point is you shouldn't be partying. After doing no. the welcome to welcome to country. Yeah, that's I mean, that's the thing. I didn't know anyone there either. So then I was talking to this one guy that was just, you know, I just, you know, like it's just the conversation's just not when it's just not going. Like you're talking he's a, to someone. He's a bad conversationalist. He just was a bad, bad conversation. Convers but then it starts making you really bad as well. Right. Like I feel like a similar thing happens when you've played tennis. Like if you play someone who's really bad, you start like getting double faults and stuff. Like you play to the level of your opponent. Right. And I'm not saying I'm a big shot, but if you play someone who's slightly, like if you talk to someone who's a better conversationalist than you, you rise, your game rises, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. But this guy was just, you know, of course he found out that I did comedy. That always happens. And he's like, oh, he's like, he's your favorite comedian. And I was like, Stuart Lee. And then his girlfriend goes, isn't he a mouse? <laughs> isn't he and, a um, mouse? Wow. And then so I was like, who's your favorite? And he's like, probably Ricky Gervais because he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, wow. And Michael McIntyre, of course. So where which did the conversation, quite... which is, yeah, so wow, two of the worst. No, no, but, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> they're, not, they're not that bad, but. You know. No, but I, I just, it was just, but then like I started saying things I'd never say. Like I was like, oh, Wonder Woman's actually in the DC universe. Like just, <laughs> right. yeah, you, right. You know what I mean? Because you start like, you start even losing the ability to talk. They've brought you down. They bring you down. They bring, they brought you down. Do you find so that? Like, yeah. So you're like going like, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't mind Skrillex. Like you're going to places that you'd never go to and stuff. I've yeah, I've been at parties where I've agreed that Mark Latham is a good guy just to keep the conversation going because <laughs> like I don't actually know what I believe anymore. Like right. I'm like, whatever, yeah, we're doing that, are we? Yeah, I like purple, purple drink. What? You know what I mean? Like whatever. You're just capitulating to keep just social flow at all costs. Yeah, and I think the capitulation leads you to say bizarre things that are like almost foreign to yourself. Absolutely. Well, I know exactly what and, you're talking about. And you end up cringing at stuff you you say. Yeah. You hate yourself. You know, you do. You, you like, they're like, oh, isn't the dog cute? And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm dead inside. I don't know. Like, you say something just cringe worthy, <laughs> like, like something you heard on a documentary about goths or whatever. That's a particular, like just... <laughs> that's a particularly awkward thing to say. That dog's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead on the inside. Yeah, but you say that it's not even real to you. You're just saying it because you're like, I don't even know. I'm just gonna fill the you're fucking just making words. Bullshit. Right, right. 
So, um, you, cause you, you hate, you hate confrontation and anger. Yeah. Like that's, that's what that is though. You're avoiding, yeah, totally. you're just agreeing. Yeah. 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 Just please let's get this. Like, I can't, I don't even know how to experience the anger, like the emotion of anger directly. Like if I'm angry, I won't react. I'll just calculate the rudeness that's just occurred. Like I'm like, right. oh, he said I had a gay shirt. That's a seven. That's about a seven. Like I'm doing a right. Yelp review on the disrespect that's occurred. So the and disrespect is happening. The disrespect is happening and you're just grading it for later. Yeah, you know, I'm like seven. That'll go in the Excel spreadsheet. You know, like, cause you tabulate all the grievances that you've got. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's what we do. And then see- a lot of people in that time have already broken a beer glass and are like wielding it to the person's face. Like you lose time. So are you em- envious of the, of the guy who, who you go, that's a gay shirt and they just smash a beer bottle and try and cut their throat. Like, are you envious of the guy who does react? There's a part of you that wants to be the guy eating the surf and turf, just yelling and walking around with a portable audio speaker, playing your own music. Do you know what I mean? I can't believe how many times we brought up portable audio speakers on this podcast. I reckon we brought it up almost every episode. We bring up Bluetooth speakers because there's such a such a, a precise way of just you know categorizing a certain individual that would have a Bluetooth speaker that's playing publicly. Well, I'm, that well that guy's not calculating disrespect numerically. He's right. just head by a window. Right, I see what he you mean. His own reflection. Do you know what I mean? He's reacting. He's right. reacting in real time. Well, see, my dad's a bit like that. Like, dad is like a. My dad doesn't give a fuck, which is not something I've inherited because my mother was a nun, so she was like super introspective and shit. And like, yeah. uh, so we got that. So we've got neuro- all types of neurosis. We got like a smorgasbord of neurosis from my parents. But my dad recently, this is crazy, right? My dad, really thick guy, exercises a lot, filled yeah. with panic, filled with panic and stress. Um, <clears throat> yeah, exercises a lot, very fit, thin, but then finds out he's got he's got to have a he's got to have a double, triple, a double bypass, right? Yeah, has a, has that operation? It's quite stressful for us, obviously emotionally and otherwise has it has you as the operation all fine you know a guy who's lived his life in panic and anxiety and you know for some people that would be a turning point one would say a wake-up call and i'm going to visit him in the hospital the day after the operation he's sitting there on fentanyl fentanyl which is the you know the most powerful opioid on the planet i think and it's like heroin Mm. and he's still impatient and annoyed on heroin like Jesus. he's not yeah That's like he's he's nodding out a bit and he's pressing the button for the nurse and he's like where's the fucking fucking intensive care unit bullshit and then the nurse turns up and he's like fucking 10 minutes later but on heroin which yeah puts, which puts people into a state of euphoria and bliss and that nothing matters yeah it just makes me think it- like once your neural pathways are locked in by the age of, you know, he's in his seventies, like maybe nothing can change that. Yeah. That I don't think neuroplasticity works when you're in your seventies, like developing a new habit or whatever, or a new yeah. neural groove. Yeah. <laughs> a new neural groove. Yeah. I feel like they're quite cemented by that time. All the habits and stuff. It's going to yeah. be just so much inertia to overturn it. Yeah. But I did find that fascinating that like such a powerful drug seemed to have no effect on his personality. Yeah. Like dad would be the only junkie who would be like, when's this euphoria going to fucking end? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got stuff to do. I've got stuff to do. I don't want to be euphoric in a state of bliss. Yeah. When, when is it going to finish to the next thing? It's crazy to me, but um in a lot of ways, like I connected more with my dad in hospital simply because like over the years, dad avoids connection through activity. Like yeah. he has skiing trips and shit like that to avoid actually talking. 
like a skiing trip is a perfect white middle-aged way of bonding because it's impossible to connect in any way because you're wearing protective gear and you're skiing yeah. separately down a slope. It's, it's a great example because there's too much equipment to connect. It's impossible to connect. It's just like all, a lot of equipment. It's all action and no actual time connecting. Like yeah. you never see people ski up to an Alpine lodge like, shh. Yeah. So anyway, how have you been lately? Like, how's your love life? Are you okay? Uh, like what's going on in your life? I'm worried about you. Can you tell me your emotional no. state? No, you're skiing. You can't, you can't hear them. <laughs> it's there's impossible. snow coming. Like there's like, avalanches and shit. Like they almost. <laughs> there's no be, emotional avalanches. That's for sure. Like your dad would want to be in like the movie Taken or something because there's just so much to do. Yeah. <laughs> that's do you know what I mean? My dad avoids emotion both internally and with other people through action. Yeah. He, cause he'd be watching that going, that's me. Like, fuck, I wish that I had to save my kid. Cause it might be the only way I can talk to them. Well, he'd or be connect. like, he'd be like, I could be sitting at home connecting with my kid, but it, it's better that they've been kidnapped. Cause it gives me a series of jobs to do to avoid that. Yeah. He's like, Oh fuck. I've got to go to Fallujah now, get my passport renewed. <laughs> like there's now a, a list of tangible to do list. Right to, to get to get to you, and then there's equipment and stuff, and then of course he's going to be saving you, but there won't be time to talk because he'll There'll have be to helicopter and stuff, and you'll have to you know. shoot an Afghanistani guy that's yeah. like got you, and <laughs> there just won't be any time to like reflect or like have a coffee or anything. That's perfect for him. I remember, I remember coming back from college, and you know, it was a big deal. Just started studying at uni. You know, lots happening. My whole life is different. I'm living out of home now. Come back for the yeah. first time, walk in the house. Dad's just got a pair of boxing gloves. <laughs> just throws me a pair of boxing gloves and goes, let's go. And we just start boxing. Psst, psst. That's great. Instead of actually, <laughs> instead of actually connecting. That's just a blatant example of avoiding a conversation. Eh? It's hilarious to me. Cause I think there's a role model crisis in our society. Yeah. Like I think, like you think about our generation, right? You know, gener growing up in the 90s, you go watch Bill Cosby on TV, then you go to church and listen to the priest, maybe on Sundays or at Easter, talk about life and family and what's important and good. Then maybe you go home and flick on Burke's Backyard and listen to Don Burke. And every now and then Rolf Harris would be on TV talking about Australia and being Australian, you you, you go to Baskin and Robbins and Michael Jackson thriller would be playing. And you drink it. You, 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 you licking a Neapolitan. You're licking a Neapolitan. That was the nineties. Yeah. The nineties was a time where every role model for society was a sexual predator. I, yeah. That's why I think wellness or whatever has taken off because there's just no other modalities. Yeah, believe in yourself, yourself and like, and believe in yourself and make yourself live forever. Because there's like, no role models in the wellness movement. They're just sort of like, it'll just be a guy talking about it, but it's not really a role model. No, it's not like a hero of the movement or anything. No, no. I've been reading about this wellness guy. He um, said that he converted to Christianity to lower his blood pressure. He said that it it, it, his readings on his blood levels look better when he's religious and stuff. So he just, which is sort of almost going full circle where you've got like the wellness is the atheistic void, but then it actually goes back to religion to even benefit its, the body even more. Yeah. So what you're saying is religion itself has some kind of physical value to your emotional yeah. state. So even though you don't believe in it, people will go, go to church just because it makes them feel good even though they don't believe in it because they're so obsessed with feeling good and, and, and yeah. their own individual state, but they don't care about the collective or the community or God. No, no. Yeah. This guy doesn't care about it. He's just like, yeah, blood readings show that like your inflammation goes down once you pray. So that's why I have like a prayer mat and shit. Fuck. That's insane. <laughs> but he's a complete, he's a complete atheist. That's what's so interesting. He's a complete materialist. It's fascinating on so many levels. One is that there, there obviously is some benefit to humans in, in ritualistic gatherings. And yeah. I think that we actually do miss that. Yeah. 
And I think the happiness that comes from a ritualistic gathering is filled by antidepressants now. Yeah. Which we've talked about before. Funny. So there's that idea that we need ritualistic gatherings and shit. It's funny that you mentioned that because one of his, he's got like a jet lag cure. So his jet lag cure is like when you get to the airport, hug the person that picks you up because it will release oxytocin that brain chemical like the hug hormone and he says that that counteracts the negative effects of jet lag that's so fucking psychopathic to me yeah he's like use your loved one as a springboard for your own jet lag cure yes i don't know what it is about about that that fucking bothers me it's something and it's like well this gets worse it gets worse it gets worse than that this is the kind of guy who's who's having sex and then like calculating in his head the amount of endorphins and types of chemicals it's releasing. <laughs> and then he checks his fucking checks his eye watch or whatever. And the girl's like, or well, watch or whatever. I think I'm in love with you. And he's like 0.7 rise in heart rate and seven yeah. point eight. Thank you for letting me use your pussy to uh, increase my endorphin levels. Yeah. He's like, Oh, I'll be able to do Sudoku puzzles with greater ease now because you've released endorphin factor X. <laughs> sudoku puzzles yeah like he's just using the person yeah, as a my productivity all... at work your pussy is increasing my productivity at you... work she's like i love you and he's like yes i love the effects that you give me at work greater spreadsheet analysis ability <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because he, he's such yeah a yeah of... give me give me head give me head it makes it makes me it makes me more better at communicator at work and people find me more open <laughs> and Richard, Richard yeah, can, at work is more likely to give me that promotion. Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Work the balls and the shaft. And I found that that really increases my, my ability PowerPoint to, presentation to connect with new clients. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Suck the balls. Like that's what he's doing. It's that's, just all about him. Yeah. And he's, he looks at his watch while he's doing it. I'm like, fuck yeah. My heart rate's going good. That's in the good zone for burn burning fat i'm in a state of ketosis <laughs> but yeah <laughs> yeah tweak the nipples that'll get to the um endorphin uh cataclysm yeah, you, I, w- I want you to, to pinch my nipples why are you into that shit no no it just um it's uh, found that i've landed more statistics show that i land more sales after i've had my fucking nipples pinched and you stick your thumb up my asshole and you grab <laughs> I'm better at currency trading if I've had my nipples tweaked. So yeah, I'm a Bitcoin miner, so I need to be better. I need you to mine my asshole so I can get more Bitcoin mining done. I find I'm better with cryptocurrency when you fist me with a butt plug. (laughs) But yeah, I. um, But yeah, it's so like it's so uh, dystopian. Selfish. It's it's so selfish. Well, with the jet lag thing, this is when it got to even. This is when I loved it. Because he goes, if you don't have a loved one to pick you up at the airport, which is possible if you're in this world. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're Did going to Abu Dhabi. No, no, he didn't say that. But, but you, like, like, I, you added that as a twist. I added that in as a little twist. But it's like if you're going to Abu Dhabi for like a cryptocurrency trade and you don't happen to have a loved one there to like, uh, brother. But yeah, no. <laughs> He said, so, so just in this example, your loved one happens to be Arabic. <laughs> yeah. Because you're doing like, you, you're yeah. going to trade is, Liberia. Yeah. yeah. Hey, brother, happen. let me give you a hug. You're like, thank God. I needed he's this. Gonna bring, he's going to bring you in the Land Rover and show you all the, the landmines. But yeah, I, um, he, but he said that he goes, yeah, if you don't have a lo- lo- loved one. It's <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> You just know there's landmines because it's the Middle East. You're like, <laughs> come in, brother, get in the get land me. rover. We'll show you the landmines where we go on the land in the land even rover for at, the landmines. Even though it's at, yeah, we've got a land rover for the landmines. Yeah, it's a, it's a Abu Dhabi, you know, this great place. But yeah. he said, he said, if you on the off chance you don't have a loved one to pick you up when you're in the Dubai Megaplex airport that's completely <laughs> sterile, um, that's okay. I actually sell an oxytocin supplement that oh. simulates the effects of a hug. So it's like yeah. five milligrams of oxytocin. So you can just pop that and it'll feel 
So your hour watch will tell you you've been hugged? That's a brave new world. That is exactly what a brave new world is right there. Don't you love? He's like, get the hug if you can, but if not, I sell a supplement that, that simulate guy, the hug. That guy is fucked up. <laughs> that guy is <laughs> fucked up. Isn't that just, it's the ultimate in capitalism, eh? His, his body has now become an economy. That's what it is, man. You said it. It's the ultimate form of consumerism because mm. you've managed to turn all the mystery and the romance, the grandeur, the, the emotion and the unknown, you know, feel good when you see loved ones, you know, you, you go to gatherings, you do these things for mystical yeah. and spiritual purposes. All that has been instrumentalized and measured for your Commodity. capitalist commodified to be capitalist output, you know? Well, that, yeah, he's commodified it completely. And I, there's one bit where he's like, what is health? If, if not to help you, you rise the ranks of your job, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not just about getting the six pack or the, you know what I mean? It's also like how, if it's not going to help you become CEO, then what's it all good for? You know what I mean? Like it's even. Yeah. It's wow. That insane. He's very, he's very explicit. <laughs> I wonder if society will get so selfish in the future that that porn porn will encapsulate that kind of thing we were talking about. Like you'd be watching porn to be like, yeah, yeah, um, you know, this this is releasing endorphin X. You know, like it'll be like that sketch we were just doing before. Like maybe yeah, porn yeah. will be like oh, that. <clears throat> oh, like they'll be hugging in it or something. So yeah, always... and they'll be doing things that are like, and they're but... yeah. I don't know. They might integrate like puppies or whatever into it because yeah. like watching a puppy will make you feel warm inside. And then yeah, like you can have, you can have the three going at the same time. Like, to, so that makes you feel like the hug feeling. So porn is like someone just going, Oh man, I feel so good by all these different things that are stimulating oxytocin. Is that what it is? Oxytocin. That's the hug one. Yeah. That he like, oh, he's like know. narrowed it all down. He's like got them to level like oxytocin X will be released. If you finger my butt. <laughs> yeah it's crazy I feel, like we, I feel like we could just do another 20 minutes of different sexual positions that release certain endorphins like that that's become so much of the podcast like come on my face it's good for vitamin d yeah and vitamin d is important for bones and osteoporosis right there's just so many yeah yeah Fisting releases vitamin K plus, which is a good supplement for bone growth. Maybe it does, man. That's a, that's what I want to say. Maybe it does. Well, the guy's obviously, I think he's tried it all. <laughs> he would have talked about sex in the thing though. Well, yeah, I think book. he said, he says to cool down from an infrared sauna, he puts a butt plug in the freezer. <laughs> and <laughs> Are you serious? And then sticks it up his ass to cool down his body temperature so he can e email invoices while on a treadmill. He's just completely optimized, this guy. Like he, every bit of time is quantified. You can know, that's what I, that's what I think. I think this raises an interesting, interesting question about freedom. Because it's hard to articulate what about that is wrong and that's the whole premise of a brave new world the book and movie and tv series and blah 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 oh yeah i thought it was a utopia when i read it i was like what this is yeah horror you don't know what's wrong right With yeah it, china is implementing the social credit system china will be china is exactly the same as pre-war nazi germany it has a genocide it has a totalitarian dictatorship with an expanding army army that is pushing out against its neighbors taking hong kong taiwan will be thailand taiwan will be poland in this war oh yeah opinion. right anyway whatever but but who's going to be wagner <laughs> that's such a weird reference you mean well, the that fact that he was an anti-semite i don't know k-pop anyway yeah you i don't know what i'm K saying k-pop yeah <laughs> you just who <laughs> will be wagner <laughs> That was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd see what you mean because they are going to invade it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So I, anyway, that's a side. But they had this social credit system. And the difference between Hitler, who, by the way, apparently Xi Jinping idolizes, the president of dictator of China, idolizes Hitler and Stalin. And it's easy to see in his policies why. But the difference is they have technology. 
surveillance technology and they're building artificially intelligent surveillance technology to be able to rate and grade every citizen. You know about this, right? Yeah. So if you're a good citizen, you buy good products, you don't drink too much because they can measure everything you buy through your, through your yeah. card. They can measure everything you say on your phones. So they have access to that. They, they measure yeah. everything through surveillance where you go. And they measure all your bills and everything you pay and don't pay. So if you're late on bills, you drink a lot, you you, you fucking get seen going to a brothel, blah blah blah. Your your rating goes down, and then you can't, you know, you you can't do certain things. You can't rent cars. You can't blah 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 blah. It's funny to be like, oh fuck, I can't get a home loan. Roger must have seen me go to a brothel. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, have yeah, that yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, 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 the AI, down. the AI is like gone to do. <laughs> God, yeah, went to a brothel, had sex with multiple midgets, well documented through surveillance footage. Also, didn't put the garbage out. You can't get a home loan. Yeah, let alone a smoothie. They might even <laughs> stop you from getting a smoothie or whatever. Do you know what right. I mean? Like you might. Just, we don't want you. We don't want you having a, a smoothie at this yeah. place because we saw your rating and you're you're bringing down the vibe of the cafe. Yeah, your rating's too low. That's the good thing about Australia. You can just walk into a cafe looking like whatever. Yeah. Take a seat. Well, that's what I'm saying, man, is that there's people in China going, well, this credit system's good. Like some Chinese are saying, yeah, yeah it's, it's good because I just, I'm just well behaved and I, I do my work. I work really hard. I buy all the right things. I say good things about the state on social media. I've got a good rating. Yeah. My neighbor, Exor, I don't know if Exor is a Chinese name. He's been um, at, down at the brothel. Sounds every like day. the name of an antidepressant. Yeah, but. <laughs> Exor's been down at the uh, uh, at the brothel every day, and uh, and he hasn't paid a parking fine in God knows when. <laughs> and he uh, he got caught pissing in the street by a surveillance camera, and he only buys yeah. hard liquor, and he moans at night, which I've reported to the council, which also went into the database. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a citizen rating of 02 percent. And he can't. Well, that's buy. your average Australian you've described there. <laughs> Thank God that I'm bringing the fucking rating system for us. Jesus. Well, I feel like I've been a victim of it because I got banned from Uber Eats and then, of course, got banned from Uber as well because they're connected. And that is, I feel like that's microdosing China. Boy, oh boy. What I've done, do you know what I mean? I'm feeling the effect of the social credit system that Uber Eats has used. Yeah, well, Uber wow. is a company. Yeah, because I can't get an Uber, but I was always well behaved in the Ubers. Not fair. It was just on the delivery of the pad tire that I was a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That's where it went awry. What happened? I just said it never came. <laughs> <laughs> so you were trying to get the pad tie for free yeah 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 and it did work but i did it like a hundred times and then <laughs> right right and backdated it like six months in a row and it was like mostly the same restaurant and stuff so it just looked weird that i kept getting fucked over by the same restaurant but coming back for more right 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 so, so then now now's... i can't get to the airport <laughs> 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 so i have to do a runner from a cab do it analog do you know what i mean yeah like, yeah the old school the guy's way. like the guy's like please no brother <laughs> but no like you've got because if you do a runner from an uber it's just weird but i do worry about yeah, it's always uber brother taking please over. no brother <laughs> Please no. Um, but no, I uh, but I like I, I worried about Uber taking over any other aspect, you know what I mean? Because that could be a privatized version of China with Uber running right. the Medicare system or whatever. I well, might this... not get my insulin pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now. Well, we all know we don't want you to miss out on your insulin pump. Yeah, um, the old glucose fluctuations. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm worried about the brothel. You know, I'm there every other day. I wouldn't want that to bring down my ability to be able to, you know, rent a car to go to other brothels in different states. 
Uh, sorry, sir. You've been, you, sorry, sir. We can't allow you to rent this car. What are you talking about? Well, your social credit system says you've been to a brothel every day yeah. for the last six years, but I want to use the rental car to go to other brothels that are further away. Yeah, I'm going to Wollongong. <laughs> I've already booked it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Just but also the borders brothels. are closed. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it's like a pub crawl, but different. This is this is the point I want to make, right? And I don't know. I'm just saying it feels like, say, with the social credit system where it's like, what's wrong? We're just measuring everything you do. And yeah. the wellness, the wellness guy who's measures everything he does. When you when everything is measured, there there can there there can be no freedom. Yeah. And it's a metaphysical kind of freedom of the mind or something where you're aware of everything you do and that enslaves you. Yeah. So it's quite literally in China's government system, but also in the, the, the individualistic society we live in where you constantly monitor everything you do. And I think there's, there's, no, something, in yeah. that. there's something in that. Like you can measure too much. I, I agree. Like, yeah, you don't want to see everything in the finest granularity possible. Like you don't, you don't need like that clear 2020 vision. Like sometimes the best things in life are because of the, the, um, the, the lack of precision. That's what like, I'm saying. Like you tell me I who's like more this- free, like the idea that in early tribal cultures, like the indigenous were in a state of, of, uh, of, of, uh, you know, this, this awakenedness and one with nature that they believed everything was a mystery and a story and mythical and a waking dream and stuff. And that they weren't, um, you know, measuring like we do in, 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 in scientific technological societies, like who's to say that that isn't a greater sense of freedom of actually not measuring those things and not knowing and not having deadlines and dates and times that things are due at this percentage and so on. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think it's, yeah, it's a, it's a complete, it's like fascism in perfect detail almost. Fascist, fascism <laughs> is about order. And in a way, your friend yeah. there, the guy who puts a buck plug up his ass to cool his core temperature down before he does Sudoku's, in a way, is 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 a self-imposed fascism on his own mind. Well, his life is a hellish landscape of optimization. Because he like he could be having lunch and just chilling, and he's like, "Oh, is chilling out actually better than?" Yeah, and I think, I think that this kind of the technology and AI that's awaiting us both in the extreme form in China, but even in the West and your friend there is, is possibly a, a grim warning of what can go wrong. Yeah, it, well, even on, like a, even on just a basic level, like a friend was eating swordfish the other night and I told him it had the highest mercury level of all the fish because it's an apex predator. Well, that's nice of and, you. Yeah, and it ruined his dinner. Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. there is a weird, like, I mean, it's, it, it's almost like, fuck, do I care about the mercury readings? Like, let's just fucking eat some shit and not know what the fuck. Let's is, just eat it? some swordfish. God. Do you know what I mean? He's just yeah. trying to have some swordfish. He's yeah. been bricklaying all week. Is swordfish the choice of fish for bricklayers? Or is that more, he, he's been at the library all week without a job. He's got an arts degree. He's not sure what he's going to do, but his mum's sending some money and he lives at home. But it's a demountable separate from the house. So it sort of feels autonomous for him and he's inherited a car kind of you think- <laughs> fish is that is that the kind of fish that that cunt eats that kind of cunt i feel like that cunt would probably well, eat i feel like fish Br- bricky's labor is all dirty bulk you know dirty bulking like someone eats kentucky fried chicken in between two pieces of birthday cake after doing deadlifting so <laughs> they look that, pregnant is that a term so dirty bulk. dirty bulk dirty bulkings when you 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 know you deadlift and then you you eat like a fucking dinner box that you deep right. fry, wow! Because Sounds like horrible, and then those guys look pregnant and have big arms, like Junior, like Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in that movie where he gets pregnant. Right, but yeah, those guys. Um, <laughs> I feel like all Bricky's laborers do all the labor of like CrossFit, but then eat like a tradie snack pack. Like right. they don't like, you know what I mean? They don't optimize on the. So they're not swordfish people, is what you're saying? Yeah. The point is is uh don't measure don't tell people don't tell people point is don't tell people there's mercury in their swordfish just let them enjoy it and that's freedom well if you had goggles that made you see reality 2020 would you want to wear them well i think google's working on that 